Hello boaters. Well, we're at that time of year when keeping the batteries charged is very, very important. Um, winter, late autumn, early spring, it becomes crucial. I mean, it is all year round really, but like, you know, most, many boats are solar charged, so it's not too much of a problem in the summer, but in the winter, different story altogether. Now, I was wondering the other day, I thought I'd better do a video on how to determine the state of battery charge from your batteries. So you can measure the voltage and work out just how charged your batteries actually are. So this method I'm going to show you works pretty well. Uh, it only applies to 12 volt lead acid batteries. It could be any type of lead acid batteries, but it's no good for lithium. They'll have a different sort of system. I don't know about that. Um, the first thing you'll need is a multimeter. This is really important. Get a really fairly a decent one because they vary in their levels of accuracy by quite a bit. The really cheap ones are only accurate to about 1%. Um, this one that I've got is old. I bought that back in the 1980s, but it's accurate on the DC scale to half a percent, and that's fine. Some of the old analog meters can be only accurate to about 4%, and that's really not suitable for this sort of thing. Um, so get yourself a decent multimeter. You don't have to spend a fortune, just, just check the specifications of it before you buy, just to make sure that the DC range is at least accurate to half a percent. That's quite important. Now, unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as just measuring the voltage and checking against a chart for the voltage, uh, the state of charge. It's, uh, it's a bit more involved to that. If, if you do it wrong, you, the results have been wildly inaccurate. If you do it right, you should get a good idea of where you are as far as the percentage of the battery is actually charged. Uh, before we start, we just need to mention a little bit about batteries. Your domestic batteries on a boat, you, you probably have one, two, three, four, or possibly even more of those. They'll all be 12 volt connected together in parallel. And each battery may be, say, 120 amp hours. So let's say we've got two 12 volt, 120 amp hour batteries connected together in parallel. The output of that will still be 12 volt, but it'll be 240 amp hours. When you've connected them together, they effectively become one battery, 240 amp hours. Now that means that if I was to plug something in that drew one amp, I would be able to run that device for 240 hours on a full charge. If I plug something in that used 10 amps, then we would get 24 hours of use from it. That's, that's, the, uh, that's what it is in, on paper. In practice, you'll find that uh, things maybe don't quite work out quite that way, but it's a general sort of uh, general rule to, that you can sort of keep in mind. Uh, the other thing to remember, so whatever your amp hour capacity is of your domestic batteries, that's my phone beeping away there, um, Bear in mind that that capacity, 240 amp hours or whatever it is, is only correct when the batteries are new. Um, over time, the capacity of the batteries, as they age, it'll decrease. So maybe after three years, your 240 amp hour battery is now only maybe a 40 amp hour battery. It would have degraded that much over time. So it's very hard to know quite how much power you've got left. You know that you need to replace your batteries when they just don't serve you anymore, when they go flat and then you put them on charge and then within an hour or two your charge is telling you that they're fully charged. Wow, that's really quick. It shouldn't be that quick. Um, so you start to use the batteries again. They don't last very long. They go flat and again you've got another very rapid recharge. Uh, that means they've had it basically. Um, a 240 amp hour battery bank, if that goes flat and you have to recharge it, that'll take a long time. You've got to put in a lot of power to get that back again. So bear in mind the age of your batteries. It won't be, if they're more than a year old, it won't be what it says on the battery anymore. It will have degraded by X amount. It depends how well you look after your batteries. Um, I don't think the quality of the battery has a great deal of bearing on it, to be honest. I think it's more about how well you 
ideally you want to keep them as charged as possible all the time. Anyway, more on that in a moment. Now I've got solar panels on my boat, so all day long, as soon as there's any daylight whatsoever, there is a charging voltage going into my batteries. Now this is important because you need to measure, for this uh, test to be accurate, you need to measure your battery voltage when they are not on charge. Ideally they have been at rest for an hour or two at least before you measure the voltage. And also you don't want anything discharging the batteries, so make sure all the lights go off, for example. Um, I, in the winter, is, is mainly the time that I, I check about things like this. Um, so I tend to wake up before it's light anyway. Uh, so the, the panels haven't started to charge yet, and they've been at rest all night. So all I have to do then is make sure everything is turned off, including lights. I would just usually use a torch. Um, just so I can see what I'm doing when I'm testing the voltage. And literally all you have to do is just connect the positive and negative of your multimeter to your DC system, ideally at the batteries themselves, but it can be anywhere in the boat. Don't really worry too much about it because voltage drop occurs over long cable runs, but that's only when high amounts of current are being used. The more current that's being used, the greater the voltage drop. The multimeter doesn't use any current as such, so there won't be a, a noticeable voltage drop. So measure the voltage wherever you can, positive and negative, and see what it tells you. And then there's this little chart, which I'll put up on the screen in a moment. And basically you can compare the voltage that you've measured with this chart. And it's safe to say, remember the batteries are not being charged and they're not being discharged, so this is their at rest voltage. If they're 12.6 or higher, that's 100% charged. Okay. If they're 10.5 or lower, that's 0%. And uh, you never want to get down there. Um, and voltages in between those two extremes will give you a different state of percentage charged. You never want to go below 11.9 if you can possibly help it, and that'll be 40% charged. Now one thing to note is that a healthy battery bank will discharge pretty slowly. Okay, so it'll let's say it takes 20 hours to go from 100% charged down to 11.9 volts, which is 40% charged. Now the remaining charge in the batteries, you'll probably find that will go down a lot quicker. It's not, a, it's not like a linear discharge rate. It'll, it'll, the, the weaker they get, the faster they'll seem to drain. So bear that in mind. Ideally, in an ideal world, you just want to cycle the batteries gently. So in other words, if you can go from 100% charged down during a day, down, down to like 90% charged, and then the next day, it, your, your batteries or whatever like, only need to be charged 10% uh, to bring them back up to 100. And this gentle cycling, just, just a bit, just, uh, just taking a bit of power off the top, will mean that your batteries never really discharge as such, and they will last a lot longer because of that. So measure your voltage when they're not when the batteries are not on charge and when they're not being discharged. Compare them off against this chart and that should give you a pretty good idea of what percentage of charge your batteries are at. Hope this has helped. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.